Hello, today I want to share with you my top five marriage books. Of course, it's going to be amazing. Number one, the very best marriage book I have ever read is John Gottman's um, Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. Now, this is a book that um, I know a lot of people really like. I know marriage counselors that really like this book because it is based in decades of research and science. It's not somebody's opinion about what worked in their marriage or in their um, counseling practice. It is studying hundreds, even thousands of couples, what makes marriages work and what destroys marriages. And Gottman has put his research in this practical book that is meant for people who are married to work through. There are assignments in the books. It talks about the research. It talks about the principles behind things. And it is my number one pick for a marriage book. If there is only one book you ever read about marriage, it needs to be this book. My number two pick is Gary Chapman's Five Love Languages. This is a book that is not as research-based as Gottman's. It's a little bit more um, his perspective and opinion. Um, it's been criticized for um, the way he divides things up. Um, and also um, that maybe it's not a complete picture, but that being said, it is a really great way to look at how we show love and different ways we might not have thought to show love. I don't think that reading this book will solve all of your problems. I don't think that it's that simple that you're like, oh, well, they just haven't been speaking my love language. And then if we do that, then like everything will be hunky dory. But I think that having this perspective that there are different ways to show love and that maybe we want to hit on all of them um, as anybody in a relationship, whether it's a marriage relationship, a friendship relationship, a parent-child relationship, um, I think it's really great to open that up and think about how we experience and show love. As a sub book to that one, Gary Chapman also has the five languages of apology that I was along the same lines of not how we show love, but how do we show remorse? How do we apologize? And how do we want people to apologize to us? And being in any relationship, especially an intimate one, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have reasons to apologize. And thinking about um, different ways you can do that might help you find something that works really well in your relationship. The next book is Mort Fertel's Marriage Fitness. And this is a book that I haven't read, but my husband has, and he really likes it. And from what I understand, it is a book that equates um, marriage fitness to physical fitness. And it encourages you to constantly be working at your marriage, as well as gives really um, specific suggestions for how you might do that. So my fourth book is 30 Lessons for Loving by Pillamer. And this author did a 30 Lessons for Living where he interviewed older Americans. Um, I think his cutoff was 60 or 65 and older about everything they had learned and wanted to share with the world about love in this book. Le the 30 Lessons of Living was more broad, but this one is all of his interviews about love. And um, it's not, he calls them experts, but this isn't a Gottman style researcher. It's not a Chapman lifelong counselor and therapist. This is people who have been living their lives, trying to make relationships work. Some of them have been married for 50 plus years. Some of them were in disastrous relationships, abusive relationships. Um, and so there is this wealth of perspective from what he calls experts from these older Americans that they share. And I found it very insightful and just encouraging. And I think it's a great read for anybody, no matter where you are, whether you are dating or thinking about getting married, maybe you're engaged, 
Maybe you've newly married. Maybe you're having your first kids. Maybe you're becoming an empty nester. Um, because he interviewed older people, that these are people who have um, advice and things to say about all of those life stages. And um, it's interesting to hear what people tend to say a lot and stuff that is also outside the normal traditional advice. There is um, some of that, of course, you know, the classics are classics for a reason, but also what you hear over and over again that you maybe didn't think of. And the final book I want to share with you is Should I Stay or Should I Go? by Lenny Bancroft. So if you're looking at a video about the best marriage books, some portion of you are doing that because you don't feel like your marriage is great. And you might even be questioning if this marriage is healthy or if it's moved into um, abuse or codependency. And this is an amazing book that talks about mental health, talks about addiction, talks about abuse, the really big problems in a marriage that are not going to be solved by going to a marriage conference getaway weekend. They may not even be solved by going to weekly marriage counseling. That um, if you have a problem in your marriage that is pervasive and serious, that you, there's often not a handbook for like, what do you do in this situation? What is the right choice? And this is that handbook that I think everybody um, should have access to whether you think you're going to need it or not. And it talks about where is that line between a healthy relationship and an unhealthy one? When does it make sense to leave the relationship? When is divorce okay? When is it maybe the best choice? It also talks about what is a healthy relationship? What should I expect from my relationship? Because when you are in a bad relationship, especially if you've been there for a long time, it's hard to remember what you deserve and what you should expect. Like, is this a problem that, you know, every marriage is hard and people, you know, relationships are hard and people have problems? Or is this a, no, this is a big deal problem, that this is more than you should be asked to deal with. Um, and so it's a book that I just, I, I want everybody to know about because you don't know who is in that situation. Um, and you don't know, maybe you may become in that situation if you don't think you are now. Um, I had a friend whose husband suffered a stroke um, in their um, 50s and his personality changed dramatically and while they are still married and I assume they're doing okay um, it really went to show me that even if you think your marriage is rock solid that you could still find yourself in a situation where your marriage is not healthy where it is unacceptable and we don't often do enough to understand where that line is. So on that note, which I know is kind of a downer, but I think is really important to go through. Those are my five best marriage books. I hope that one or all of these books helps you in whatever situation you find yourself in, whether you're looking towards marriage and you wanna know what makes a marriage work, or you're in the middle of it and things are going great or you're in the middle of it and things are going horribly horribly wrong if you enjoyed this video please click like share this with a loved one with someone who you know might be struggling um and subscribe we have multiple book lists we do book reviews on tuesday if you want to get those in your inbox click the little bell icon and we hope to see you around